Good morning, Unity of Payson. And good morning, Interfaith Community, who's joining us online. Many of you, happy Earth Day to everyone. Did you know that? It's Earth Day. Yesterday, Yesterday was Earth Day. Well, I got it close. <laughs> Every day is Earth Day. I like that one. So as we join together this morning, will you take just a moment to spend with me in the quiet as we pray? God of all goodness, we are grateful. We are grateful for this planet that serves us in so many ways, that beautifies our lives, that enriches our lives, that enlivens our existence. We spend a moment to be grateful for the planet with whom we are one. It, too, is not separate from us, for all is in oneness. So as we join together this morning, we open our hearts and we open our minds to hear the word of spirit that is waiting for us. And so we are grateful for each one who's here, the energy that they bring to our coming together, and for the insight for the inspiration that we'll receive in this time together. Again, we are grateful, and so it is. Amen. So now it is time for our opening song. And our opening song is Thank You for This Day. Would you like to stand? If you, li if you are comfortable standing. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This beautiful, this beautiful. This beautiful day, this beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. Thank you for my friends, spirit. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my friends, spirit. Thank you for my friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. My wonderful. We have another tambourine in the back that has a bongo drum to it, too, <laughs> next time. All right, it's time to do our welcome. And this is our welcome and connection time and the blessing of our visitors. Welcome to Unity of Payson. We're glad you're with us this morning. If you're with us virtually today, please enter in the chat where you are joining us from and we'll put the gallery view up shortly. And if anyone is new to Unity of Payson, if you're here for the first or second time, either in person or virtually, 
Please raise your hand so we may recognize you. Okay, I don't... Well, welcome back, Matthew and Rachel. I see Jennifer is online. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Please stay after the service. We would like to break bread with you, and that's the time when we talk about the message and the little insights we've gleaned that we can apply to our daily lives. And we do that with all on virtual as well as anyone who wants to stay in person. And let's see what else. If you'd like to be informed about our activities, please uh, leave us your email so we can send you our Monday e-newsletter. And let's say our prayer. Ready? Together? We love you. We bless you, and we welcome you. All right, so it is. And now it's time for gratitudes. We're grateful for those who support Unity of Payson with your time, talent, and treasure. <laughs> grateful for the events of each week, including Morning Cafe and Qigong and organic gardening. We had A Course in Miracles. We have a book circle. And we had our healing workshop yesterday. We're thankful for the technology that allows us to meet in person and virtually. <laughs> and Neil is getting that microphone ready for gratitude. So be thinking if you have a gratitude, he's going to pass it around and you can share it. All right. So it's time for gratitudes. We're <laughs> And um, if you have a gratitude to share, please raise your hand to be recognized. And if you're online, you can unmute to share. And mute again when you're done. Who would like to share a gratitude? We have Betty. Uh, good morning, all. This is Betty. And um, I was participated in the workshop, the healing workshop yesterday. And it was wonderful. All the different sections of it flowed really well. We got great feedback, and um, we'll probably be planning some additional workshops. So, awesome. Thank you, Betty. Any other gratitudes to share? I'm just going to say ditto uh, to that about the workshop. It was a wonderful time. Matthew, here you go. Hello, everybody. I'm Matthew. I um, haven't been here in a long while. Um, I'm grateful for housing. Rachel and I were homeless for a long time. Um, I get a little choked. Um, grateful for work. Um, grateful my kids back to my mom. Grateful to be back here. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Welcome back. I have, a, I have a gratitude. We found a we found a for the summer for the summer. You found what for the summer? We found a place. We found a place. Up, up. In, in Payson? Yes. Yes. Wonderful. So you'll be with us in person for the summer. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. And we have Manny. Manny. <laughs> yes. Yes. I want to say one gratitude to Tom. Uh, yesterday during the healing workshop, Tom uh, led us in Qigong, and it was fabulous. It was really fabulous. Thank you, Tom. I think of Tom as the AV person, but boy, when he's doing Qigong, it's a whole nother energy level. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, we have uh, Sarah. Sarah. Yes, yes, good morning. Good morning. Oh, I think we, oh, have, I an think we have an echo. Anyway, my, anyway, my, my computer's, my computer's echoing. Computer's echoing. Um, um, I'll go forward. I'll go forward. Yes. <laughs> I'm thankful, I'm thankful for, for our church our community, community being able to being share, able with, to share Payson. with Payson yes. and, and um, our drumming, our drumming circle. circle. 
with Cindy, with Cindy and, Cliff. and Cliff and, and um, Eddie. Um, Eddie. So, um, so um, thankful, thankful, especially, especially for, music. for music. Okay, thank you so much. All right. I love that we have all these gratitudes. Isn't that wonderful? It's a wonderful way to start the day. Thanks everyone who shared a gratitude and we'll move on. Unity is grounded in meditation and affirmative prayer. We have trained prayer chaplains and we have some in person here and uh, we have Betty and myself. And if you have a prayer request or a prayer need, you can tap one of us on the shoulder after service and we will go to a sacred holy space and pray with you. And also, uh, if you have a prayer request and you would like us, the uh, Unity of Payson Prayer Chaplain team, to pray with you for 30 days, uh, you can either place your request in the uh, prayer request box on the greeter table, and or you can email to neil.unityofpayson at gmail.com. And we will pray with you for 30 days. And at the end of that 30 day period, we will forward your request to Silent Unity and they will pray for you another 30 days. And that is a 24 seven uh, project. <laughs> um, I've been to Silent Unity and, and I know how they do it. Every half an hour, there's someone in the <laughs> prayer chapel holding all the prayer requests sacred. 24-7, and there's a light on 24-7 in the tower. Okay. If you want one of us to contact you, please leave your contact information with your request. <coughs> Unity of Payson's theme for April is life. L'chaim, to life. The affirmation, let's say it together. I claim divine vitality and am enlivened daily by spirit. I am life. And today's speaker is Reverend Julianne so Lewis. When you're thinking, when you're thinking for guilt. Okay, please mute if you're online. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Julianne serves at the interfaith community. She has a lively and passionate approach to New Thought Ministry, A Course in Miracles, and the Study of Major World Religions. Reverend Julianne offers insightful and inspired teaching that entertains, illuminates, and challenges, sparking spiritual growth. And our daily word today is pray for others. And the affirmation is, as I pray, I affirm the activity of God in your life and mine. I'm honored by the trust of those who ask me to pray with them. Whatever I am asked to pray about, my responsibility is always the same. To recognize all qualities of God are active, even in the most challenging circumstances. I remain steadfast, affirming this truth. If I've been asked to pray for healing, I release all thought of illness. I affirm divine life is active in every cell. I see harmony and perfect function restored. If I am praying for abundance, I entertain no thought of lack. I affirm divine wisdom, love and understanding, guiding the one with whom I pray to make wise, prospering choices. As I affirm truth for all who have asked for prayer, my awareness of God's activity in my life increases also. And from 3 John 1, 2, beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health just at it, as it is well with your Lord. So yesterday uh, in our healing workshop, 
uh, Reverend Neal did a uh, segment on affirmative prayer, and this is exactly what he was talking about yesterday. So those who were at that workshop, this is like a double dose of affirmative prayer. And um, it's, a, it's well written. So this is the way we do it, and we pray with rather than for. So there's a difference there, because we're co-creators, and where two or more are gathered. There he is in the midst of us. Okay, and now it is time for our speaker, Reverend Julianne, to share her message with us. It is so wonderful to be here, uh, to be in Payson, which I love, but to be with each of you and it's been way too long. It really has. <laughs> the benefit to being short. <laughs> uh, it, it was really kind of interesting that you said you hear me because I did a memorial service yesterday. And uh, I'm going to be straightforward and honest with this. We were very concerned about the microphone because I don't notice things like I didn't this, okay? And I asked the funeral director, I said, you please go up and check that mic. Make sure it's on as loud as it can because of the age group that we have here, okay? So he did. And then when I went in, I said, will you come with me and check it again? And I pounded and at it and it's loud and everything's good. I said about a half a dozen words, and this woman spoke up, and she said, I can't hear you, <laughs> bitch. That was the start to a memorial service. Now, I've had some interesting opportunities with memorials, and <laughs> I'll share some more in a little <laughs> bit. But what I recognized in that moment, more than anything, was the only time I will ever have is now. And when she said that, that was now. And that immediate moment did not feel like a holy day. But yet, in my heart mind, I knew it was. And I knew that there was a lot more going on with that lady than the fact that she didn't think she could hear me. So. Do we trust the moment? I did in that moment. Surprised me. I really wasn't critical of her. I had difficulty not laughing out loud, actually. I was okay with it. But are we willing to really be our true self in every now moment? Are we willing to let who we are, what we are, be here now, even when we supposedly have a volume issue? <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, the, these questions really make us look at trust. And the life that we live has to be based on trust. You know, I trusted the funeral director. It wasn't his fault. I was heard by everybody, and so was this lady. But the thing of it is, I really got to thinking a little bit more yesterday about trust. And so I looked it up online. Uh, what a mistake that was. <laughs> <laughs> I had pages and pages of yes, no, right, maybe, okay, thank you, and I stopped. So what did I do? This won't surprise you that know me. I came up with my own definition for trust. <laughs> and it is the reflection understood of our spiritual truth. Yes, it's an acronym. Yes, it'll help me remember it. <laughs> but the reflection that we are willing to understand and stand under of our spiritual truth is what trust is. 
And what is our spiritual truth? Now that I didn't bother to look up. Believe me. <laughs> the spiritual truth of who we are is the divine gift of grace. And we are called to live each and every day, every now moment, by grace. To live with a full conscious awareness of love's presence. That is what it is to live and share divine grace, the gift that it is to ourselves and to all. Now, do you trust that you will do that today? Do you trust you did it yesterday? Tomorrow? And the days yet to come? The question that naturally arises in me is how wisely am I using that gift of grace? Am I retreating into the memory of the past? Am I daydreaming about the future? We can neither live in the past nor the future. We have to live in the moment. But the thoughts of the past, the thoughts of the future, can contaminate our emotional and mental outlook. That our reaction to this moment, each moment we have, will be a thing of despair, distress, dis-ease. Then I have to take that deep breath in and I have to realize, and as a teacher, I hope I teach, that the thoughts created in my mind create my life. So, we can neither live in the past nor the future. Each moment we have, we can choose happiness. We can choose peace. We can choose gratitude. In this material world experience of life, I admit I often feel quite challenged. And I will jump into self-criticism and judgment of others. And yes, myself in a moment of fear and judgment that quick. I made a, told you a story of the last memorial service I did. Let's go back a little bit earlier in the week. I had the opportunity to serve a family and I walked into the chapel. The first person I saw sitting there, the very first person I saw sitting there was a priest with a clerical collar. My mind immediately did upside down, inside out, just remarkably upset because there was a priest and I was doing the service. And what was he going to think? What was he going to say? What was he, would he interrupt me? Would he stand up and stay hush up? Would he, would he, would he, would he? My, I mean, I could have written in seven chapters in two seconds, I swear. Why? A lot of it had to do with the fact that I grew up Catholic. I grew up with consistent Julianne, you have to look at this. Julianne, you can't do this. As a matter of fact, we were singing the opening song today. I had my back to all of you. Donna knew I was mouthing the words. Training I had as a child. Here's this priest. I had to give myself permission to really take a deep breath in. I had to give myself permission to understand that, yes, like you, I am a spiritual being having a human experience, and thoughts in mind produce in kind. I took that deep breath in, and I say, Holy Spirit, we're in this together. And then I began the service. The priest never stood up. He never interrupted me. He never said a word. And at the end of the service, after I talked with the family, I went out the side door instead of walking past him just to avoid any possible conflict. So you can see, even though I asked Holy Spirit to share with me, I still had an issue going on because I made sure I avoided him. I went out into the public area. The funeral director and I were talking, and all of a sudden she said, uh, Rev. J., I'll talk to you later. 
and she walked away. Guess what? Right there. I said, hello, Father. And he said, Rev. J., that service was outstanding. I said, thank you. And he said, seriously, I'd like to have a couple of the quotes you used. Would you mind giving me that information? I said, no, I'd be very, very, very pleased to. And I opened up the book, and he took pictures of them, OK? And then he said, and that prayer you shared, that prayer about the traveler, he said, I want that. And I, fine, I gave him that. <laughs> and then he said, I am so grateful to have been able to share with you today, and I really thank you. And he handed me his business card, and he was a minister at an Episcopalian church. <laughs> and he made the comment to me, putting his arm around me, and he said, thank you so much for sharing this information with me. And he said, I can't wait until I get home to tell my husband about you. And it was like I had lost 25 pounds in that moment. <laughs> I, I, am, I am absolutely serious. All of that self-criticism, that self-fear, that self-judgment that I had projected on that man left. And I was back to being me, and I was back to him being him, and the two of us were together. I'm having a human experience. So are you. Now, part of that human experience is that I'm an arrangement of bones and flesh and loving truth desires carrying out with a gift of grace. That gift of grace has always been within us. And fortunately, it was stronger than my ego was yesterday. It really was. So, you know, we have a, a wonderful group here today. Take a moment and look around and see each other. Really take a look. See each other. What are you seeing? Separate physical beings, right? That's what you're seeing. However, Take that deep breath in and see the light in that spiritual being. And if you're close to somebody, look in their eyes. Know it's there. Know who they are. We have to remember that each one of us is carrying that spark of reality, that beauty that connects us in the oneness, that hugs us in the physical. Yes. I remember reading a book so very, very long ago, and I can't remember the title of it, which sh shouldn't surprise you. <laughs> but it was titled Translucent Something. And it referred to us as being the sky instead of a cloud. It referred to us as being the ocean instead of a wave. And it made me realize that even though we're wearing this temporary costume, this arrangement of bone and flesh, we, we believe it has seeming <coughs> limitations. We believe that we can or cannot. But the reality of it is our spiritual reality is untouched by the seeming chaos within this body, within this ego mind, and within our world. We never know when a person is going to break out of the divine breath and share it. We don't know how we're going to be changed by it. It was like Donna was talking about you sharing at the healing circle, Tom, and how wonderful that was. That was a moment of divine grace, a sharing about affirmative prayer, a moment of divine grace. The opportunity for understanding, we pray together as a team, that together everyone achieves miracles. That's divine grace. And within each of us, there is a calling. <laughs> Remember, we were not born into original sin. That is a, a wonderful nightmare that a lot of us were raised with. 
However, that nightmare is over and done with for a lot of us, please. Uh, as Matthew Fox says, we were born into original blessing. Can you say we are holy now? We are. We don't need to be saved. Within each of us, that holiness has a calling. Sylvia and I were sharing about that before the service. We have a calling, we have a purpose to be truly helpful. And yes, to be truly helpful to ourselves and to all. It's a simple call of our divine truth, the calling to be who we are. And our mission is to rediscover, acknowledge, and live that calling. Everything is a miracle. When we see things differently, we are experiencing a miracle. And through our affirmative prayers, our open heartfelt meditation, through our true creativity expressed in music and poetry and art and dancing and drumming in so many different ways, we understand why we are here and who we are. It is through the love that is shared in this community and family and friends that we can really begin to understand what love truly is. And that is who we are. That is what our God is, love. Perfect love is a love that gives when asked, notices your needs even before you do. It touches all who behold it with a gentleness and a confidence. And it's about our willingness to be on this earth plane and share love. Yes, Earth Day yesterday, Earth Day now. Let us share the love for the planet, for the life on this planet, for each other. Because it's through loving and serving others and ourselves that we awaken to the truth. It's about waking up to our birthright, our connection, and it isn't something that we have to earn, that we have to sacrifice for. Right now, we possess this grace. Not tomorrow, not the next day, in this moment. We must be open-minded and willing to accept it. That genuine reflection of Christ's love, Christ consciousness that is within each and every one of us. Right here, right now, in this moment. Without an end. Should I repeat that? Without an end. This does not mean that every moment of our lives <laughs> is going to be filled with complete happiness. You know, somebody's going to call me a bitch. That's going to happen. Just because I heard it this time doesn't mean it doesn't happen more than that. <laughs> the thing of it is, though, that complete happiness is who we are. Complete beauty and holiness is, and purity is who we are. So every time that we can, we can tune into that. And that when we are seeing something different, like my experience with the priest, I have to understand the lesson I learned in that about the projection of my self-judgment on him. And it was a story I made up and that I was able to forgive. Believe me, if I hadn't forgiven myself for it, I wouldn't be able to share it here today. We have to be open-minded and we have to give our self permission when something like that or something that we do not understand is happening, we have to give ourselves permission to ask Holy Spirit, what is this teaching me now? What is this teaching me now? What is the good that is in this now? If we take the bad, if we take the negative, is it not out of the bad that the next moment is going to be born? Life is often a bed of roses. My mother used to tell me, and then my grandmother used to say, pick the thorns out and throw them away. Life is like a bed of roses. We're the ones that hold on to the thorn. This life we appear to be living is simply a teaching, learning experience, and an opportunity. 
and to recognize and accept the truth and the purity and the holiness, we have to live our life based on trust, the reflection understood of our spiritual truth. So what I'd like to do is ask you to join me, to join me in recognizing my heart is open. I want you to say it out loud. My heart is open. Say it again. My heart is open. My heart is open. I bow to you. I recognize myself in you. The same presence, the same awareness shining brightly. Our worldly histories differ. Our illusion of fears are the same. Different paths, same journey. I am not fooled by the mask you wear. I am not fooled by your appearances. Your clothes, your voice, the color of your skin, the tough roads that you have traveled, the tunnels you have crawled your way through. I'm not fooled by the one you pretend to be. The happy one, the enlightened one, the depressed one, the fun one, the blissed out one, the expert, the one who knows. None of these roles are our truth. Yet, I bow to them with my open heart to you. The ways in which you try to protect yourself, I bow to with an open heart. But here, it's safe to be my friend. Here it is safe because there's no judgment. There's no shame. There's no blame. Just this open space, this open heart, this community that embraces only love. So now we affirm again, my heart is open. There's nothing to prove. Now we affirm again, my heart is open. It is held within the loving grace of the divine. Yes, now we know that everything is holy. Everything is holy now. When I was a boy each week On Sunday we would go to church And pay attention to the priest And he would read the holy word And consecrate the holy bread And everyone would kneel and bow The day the only difference is Everything is holy now Everything Everything, everything is holy now. And when I was in Sunday school, we would learn about the time Moses split the sea in two, and Jesus made the water wine. And I remember feeling sad. Miracles don't happen still but Now I can't keep track Cause everything's a miracle Everything, everything Everything's a miracle Wine from water is not so small Better magic trick is that anything is here at all. So the challenging thing becomes not to look for miracles, to find him where there isn't one. When 
Holy water was a rare at best. It barely wet my fingertips. But now I have to hold my breath. Like I'm swimming in a sea of air. It used to be a world half there. Heaven's second rain hand me down. But I walk it with a reverend air. Cause everything is holy now. second rate hand me down but I walk it with a reverend hair cause everything is holy now Everything is holy now. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we read, There's an appointed time for everything, a time for every matter under the heavens. This is the time we open our heart mind. This is the time we remember the love that we are and we share in unity. So I ask if it's comfortable, close your eyes, focus your attention on your breathing, Follow the natural rhythm, the gentle rise and fall of each breath. Feel it coming and going quietly and let it gently guide and carry you deeper and deeper within. Deeper and deeper within. Become aware of your heart space. Allow it to open be aware of the gentle rise and fall of each breath and let it carry you into that silent, open space of your heart. You are safe. You are loved. You are one within the divine. You are pure, you are holy. I am yours, God, mind, body, and spirit. I feel your presence. I feel the fullness of your wisdom, the touch of your love, the strength of your grace. With the gentle rise and fall of each breath, we are carried into that silent, open space of our heart. And we 
and take another deep breath in. Let it out. And picture a beautiful morning, a beautiful Earth Day. Oh, the sky is clear. There's a gentle, warm breeze. You feel comfortable. You are aware. Ah, the temperature is perfect for the day. A beautiful, beautiful cloud is above. And it shares a very gentle, warm, sprinkling rain. It's warm, it's blessing, and it flows easily down over our head and our neck and we relax even more. The physical comfort as the water moves down and we relax. And now the water flows over our arms, over our back, that light rain gently flows over our chest, our stomach, we are peace, we are comfort. And we take in another deep breath and we breathe out the gratitude for this moment, for this blessing. The water moves over our legs and our feet and they relax. We have felt the cleansing and refreshing of our body. We feel that water slowly pass over us into the earth, blessing the earth as we have been blessed. Our body is at ease and we feel the peace of the earth. Now we look up and we see the clouds opening above us. We see a beautiful golden ray of light. It touches the top of our head. It's a warm ray of sunshine. And we feel that light gently entering our body. We feel every cell peacefully, peacefully filled and gently energized. We know we are that golden radiance. We know that our entire body glows with that loving light, the pure light. Every cell, every molecule of our being is filled with that golden light energy, the grace, the love, the peace that is shared. And now we see the beauty of that radiant light moving from us into Mother Earth. And we know that we are blessing Mother Earth. And we are receiving it back from Mother Earth. That beam of light is in each and every person that we think about each and every person that we know, each and every person that we love. And we see that light flowing through them into our Mother Earth and then coming back to us. The entire planet is covered with that golden light. Our Mother Earth is blessed with that love that gratitude. And in our heart, we see people with hands raised sharing this light of grace with all living beings. Mother Earth, we say thank you. We are thank you for our connection to each other as we stand on this planet, radiant with a golden divine grace of love accepting this oneness. We feel, we know, 
and we share this light. We are peace. In this now moment, we gratefully bless each other. We are grateful to our brothers and sisters of Unity of Payson and Interfaith Community and all pe peaceful faiths and religions. We know that they too join us in gratitude for Mother Earth. So take in that another deep breath of gratitude. Feel that nice, slow breath. Feel the holiness that you are, the peace that you are. Feel the love that you are. And when you are ready, take another slow, deep breath in. Say thank you. Open your eyes and be here now. I love you. I thank you. And so it is. Thank you so much, Reverend Julianne. Now is the time that we share our gifts and offerings. Unity of Payson greatly appreciates your gifts and support of this ministry. These gifts not only support our community, but they go out to the larger community. We will be playing an offering song, <coughs> excuse me, uh, One Power by Daniel Namath. And you'll have time as you listen to make a contribution. Uh, information is for giving is on the slides, and we greatly appreciate your gifts. So let's bring our attention to our gift at this time. And let's call to mind our heart's desire or desires. <sighs> Together, let's affirm freely we give and freely we receive. power invisible and you see it everywhere and every day one power indescribable and you speak of it with every word you say mysterious until you know the truth as simple as the love inside of you. Call it God, call it Spirit, call it Jesus, call it Lord, call it Buddha, Baula, angels, wings, or oh, heaven's door. But whatever name you give it, it's all one power, can't you see? It's the power of. Be 
speak so many languages Different clothing, different colors, different names But different is only dangerous When we forget that in the heart we're all the same And we'll remember once we close our eyes to see That such distances were never meant to be Call it God, call it Spirit, Spirit. call it Jesus, Jesus, call it Lord Call it Buddha, Bahá'u'lláh, Hashem or Heaven's door It's Muhammad, it's your mind, it's your soul or it's your sign It's the universe It's music, Mother Earth, or oh, Father Time. But whatever name you give it, it's all one power, can't you see? Whatever name you give it, it's the very air we breathe. Oh, it's the power of the love in you and me. One power, oh, one power. One power. the dedication of our offering. We're grateful for these gifts. We're grateful for the givers. We see the gifts going out, blessing wherever they land, filling whatever needs there are to fill, and returning to the givers tenfold. Let's say the dedication together, shall we? Divine love flowing through us blesses and multiplies all that we are, all that we have, all that we give, and all that we receive. We are abundantly prosperous, and we give thanks. All right. I was suggesting Marianne put on her prayer stole. She's another prayer chaplain in our midst. In case anyone ha wanted to tap her on the shoulder. So we are continuing with our April theme of life. 
And next week, we have the members of Unity of Payson speaking on the theme of life. So I will share a few announcements with you today, but there are many things happening. Uh, before I do, Manny wanted to share something. Would you like to come up and share? Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. One thing that Rev. J. humbly didn't mention is that the priest told the director he wanted a memorial just like she had done. So she was very humble and keeps forgetting that. <laughs> so anyway, but today at 1 o'clock, we will be transmitting through Rev. J. Zoom, Self-Inquiry, Who Am I? Be Your Blissful Self. It is a three-step inner journey that involves preparing the mind, followed by understanding the self, and finally gaining enlightenment. Freedom from all worries and insecurities. Wow, I don't worry much, but anyway. This is Mr. Arun Sera, fantastic speaker, and his meditation will take you out of this universe, or into the universe is a better word. But that's today at one o'clock. Right. Also, on the 30th, Danita, Dr. Danita Applewhite will be doing her Dan presentation for Interfaith Community. So please see the newsletter. Also, 29th of April, we have a drum circle. We will be drumming again. That'll take us higher and higher. Then on May 5th, we will have a full moon and we will be howling in the full moon. I go out and howl and howl, and then my dog goes, what are you doing? I, that's my job. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Manny. And uh, yes, so we are, the camera has moved a little bit. Um, I'm off of the screen. <laughs> Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm fine. <laughs> you know what that means. Well, not if you're not from New York. You don't know. So, okay. So the announcements for us at Unity of Payson. Our uh, regular weekly events, Morning Cafe, 9.30 every morning. We read the Daily Word or another inspirational reading and discuss on our Zoom channel. We have Qigong. Uh, with Teresa Sundays and Wednesdays. That's today, 4.30 on our Zoom channel. You just go to unityofpayson.org and click on the blue Zoom link and you'll be with us. Uh, we have a writer's group on the fourth Thursday of the month. Um, let's see. Uh, our next potluck will be May 7th, uh, the first Sunday. And we have a book circle that has started, The Artist's Way, led by Teresa. It's occurring on Thursdays at 1.30, and it's on Zoom and here as well. We're doing hybrid again. We did hybrid for the healing workshop yesterday. We had two participants, three participants online as well as the group in here, which is, I think that's a really amazing that we can do that. We can reach out. You know, the World Wide Web is at our fingertips. The whole globe we could reach out to through Zoom. Okay, so uh, we have uh, the Writers Group Thursday, April 27th from 4 to 5 on Zoom. And a PS from Neil, Reverend Neil. The uh, meeting, the Zoom meeting, uh, including the uh, meditation with Arun, is um, going to be on the Zoom channel that's on. We have some uh, flyers back there if you want to get one, so you've got all that information. If not, see Manny. He'll tell you how to get there. Um, and uh, if you're online, you can take a screenshot of the slide that's up there right now, and that'll get you to the right place. Or, 
Okay, so uh, interfaithcommunity.org. Uh, we'll also, the, the link, link will be there. So you've got lots of options on how to get here. And here means also here in person. So some of us will be here in person. Uh, I know Manny and Rev J will be. Um, and, and attend the meeting from here. Isn't it, isn't it a wondrous thing that we can make it happen wherever we are? And uh, so I'm so grateful. Thank you all for being here. This Betty's got something. Come on, Betty. It just has to do with next Sunday because I'm organizing the, um, the, the service. And it wasn't until this morning that I figured out I'm going to be doing after the uh, um, feedback from the healing workshop. I'm going to be doing some sound healing and a clearing of some chakras. All right, discussing that. So just wanted to get the subject matter for next Sunday out there. Good. Thank you, Betty. Um, I look forward to that. I hear that some chiming may be a part of that as well. And uh, so it, it, again, the things that we're able to offer and connect with both at Interfaith Community and here at Unity of Payson, take advantage of them. It's good stuff. So we will uh, shortly join in singing the peace song. But remember the text of the peace song, which says, let there be peace on earth. Let there be peace to the earth as well. And let it begin with me. We may have a role to play in that. So we'll join together. Uh, Rick has passed out a little uh, flyer uh, having to do with Earth Day. Uh, and uh, take a look at that. And uh, it's good information. Thank you, Reb J, for preparing that. Uh, so let's circle up. Uh, if you're with us online, sing along with us. After the uh, peace song and uh, the prayer for protection, there'll be a little five-minute break, and then we'll come back to break bread together so we can uh, discuss and connect. together and we will be in harmony on this so even if there's a time lag this is the truth here we go the light of the god light of god surrounds us, us. I, I, am light. I am light the love of god enfolds us i, I am, am love. love the power of god protects us i am power and the presence of god watches over us i am present Wherever we are, God is and all is well. So stay with us a little five minute break and we'll come back to break bread together, uh, connect and discuss the message of the morning.
Boarding stopped.